In this video, we'll take a look at sending messages inside of Comma Chat using traditional JavaScript and its SDK. This will include sending plain messages with simple text, as well as media messages and custom messages. Let's just jump straight into it. Let's start on the Comma Chat website. We'll head over to Developers and Documentation. Here, we'll head over to the SDK section. We're going to select the JavaScript web version and we're going to head down to messaging and select to send a message. Here we're going to cover these three main aspects, which is to send a text message, a media message and a custom message. Let's have a look at each. The text message is the most common type of message that you're often sending, which is just plain text. Media messages are things like photos as well as videos and files and custom messages are when you want to send more interesting data using things like JSON format. I'm going to continue the project we're creating where we've initialized the comma chat as well as configured it and we've logged a new user in. After the login, we're going to perform a send message. So let's have a look at how we do that. The first thing I'm going to pass in is the receiver ID, which is the unique ID of the user or the group. Here, I'm going to use let receiver ID equal Adrian, which is what we created earlier. The next thing we want to do is the receiver type. This is whether you're sending to a user or a group. So I'm going to pass in let receiver type equal comma chat dot receiver underscore type dot user. The other type is, of course, group. The next variable I'll set is the message text, which will just be a plain text message of hello world, which we'll send. So let's pass that in. Finally, we'll want to combine all of this together into an actual text message, which we'll pass as a variable. This will be created when we pass in the new comma chat dot text message, assigning the variables that we've now set with the receiver ID, the text message and the receiver type. We're now ready to perform the send message method. We can call this by calling comma chat dot send message and pass in the, in the text message and performing a request. Here, we're going to get back a reply with a variable called message. And this message is the one that we can use inside of our application. Since we're just starting out, we're simply going to console out that we've sent the message and then console out the message itself. It's also useful to do some error logging. So I'll pass in error here and I'll also console log that out so that we can see if there are any failures. Now let's test this all out. I'm going to open up a live server with the plugin from VS Code. Here I have an instance of Chrome with my console up and running. We've initialized the application and logged the user in and we've sent a message. We can actually open up the message to take a look at it. Here we can see that it's a text message with the text itself going to the user ID of Adrian as a user type, as well as a number of other data attributes that we could use inside of our application to configure it in any which way. The other type of message we can send is a group message. What I'm going to do is pass in the receiver type here as group and create a receiver ID of test group, but this doesn't actually exist yet. In order for it to exist, we need to head into our dashboard. We'll select our app and for the time being, we'll perform this action inside of the admin tools. We'll head over to groups and here we'll create a brand new group. This group will be called our test group. I'm just going to give that the name and set it to a public group type. And here's our test group. We can jump in here and have a look at the details or we can head over to the members and have a look at who is currently in the group. But for the time being, now that we have these set, let's jump back into our application and test this out. We'll open up our example app here and we're going to refresh the page and see what happens. Here we have a message that says the user currently Adrian is not part of the member of the group. And this means we have to add Adrian into the group in order for him to send or receive messages from that group. Let's head back to the admin dashboard and head over to users. Then we'll select Adrian over here. We'll head over to groups and we're going to add him to the test group. We'll select add over here and that should add the permissions. And now we should be able to simply head back into our example here and refresh the page. And now we can see that the test message has been sent successfully to the group. Now a plain text message saying hello world sometimes isn't enough. Sometimes we need to pass in metadata. Let's have a look at how to do this. We're going to set some metadata here by creating a new object called metadata with a latitude as well as a longitude. We're going to add this into the text message so that it's delivered as part of the send message method. 
all we have to do is actually call the text method, set the metadata by calling the method set metadata and pass in the metadata variable. Nice and simple. We can do the same thing for tags as well. What I'll do is create a new tags variable and this will actually be an array. Since tags can have one or multiple options, I'm going to pass in tag one and tag two. We're going to add these to the text message by simply adding in text message dot set tags with the variable tags in there. All of these are now safely passed over to the comma chat send message method. We're now going to take a look at sending a media message. This is a little bit different. We'll be using the send media message method and we're going to pass in a media message object as part of that. Media messages can include a couple of things such as photos or videos or files. We're going to have to define which type and there's two main ways to do this. The very first type is to provide the file using the traditional HTML methods such as an input and then we classify and upload that file to the comma chat server. The second way to do this is using a URL. In this case, we're passing in the URL as part of that request. And once again, comma chat is using that URL to apply that to the message. Let's start off with uploading a file. We'll head to index.html and we'll need an input to be able to do this. What I'm gonna do is create a simple file input. So I'm gonna set the type here to file, and then I'm going to give it a class as well as an ID. For both the class and the ID, I'm going to do a image underscore file and we'll later be referencing it when we're creating a function to upload it. We also need a button so that when we are performing the action, we can call it. So here, I'm just going to create a simple button with an onclick handler that will call the function send message. This will just be called send. Now we can open up a script tag and create our send message function. So let's add that in here. Let's call function send message and inside of here, we'll begin drafting out the message and how it functions. We need a few things for this send message to work inside of comma chat. As per usual, we'll need the UID, which is the user ID that we'll be sending from. So let's create a UID here of Adrian. Next, I need to create a variable called file. Here, we're gonna find the file that we're uploading by calling document.getElementID and grabbing the ID of image underscore file. This comes as an array of files, so I'm gonna call index zero, which is the very first one. The next thing that we need is the file type. So let's create a new variable for that called file type, and this is going to be the comma chat message underscore type dot image, since I want to upload an image in this case. There are other types such as video as a type as well as audio as well being a type that can be used. And finally, we have the file as a type which should cover all other examples. Just like text messages, we need to assign a user type. Here, I'm gonna call comma chat dot receiver underscore type dot user instead of group since this time I just want a regular user message. With that done, we can now create our media message. Let's assign a value here called media message and call new space comma chat dot media message and pass in the UID, the file, the file type, as well as the user type. This pretty much initializes all the settings we need to be able to send this media message. Now we can simply send it. In order to send it, we're going to call comma chat dot send media message and then we're going to place the media message here as the object we're passing across. We can now call this and we're going to get back a message here. Let's pass this into a function and console log it out to see what we're getting. First, we'll console log out that the message has been successfully sent. And second of all, we'll console out the message itself and test it out to see how it works. I'll also add in some error handling because that's always useful whenever creating any functionality. Now let me open up the Chrome browser here and we can see that we've got our file and our send button. I've got the console running in the background here and I'm gonna select to upload a recent image of myself to this example. I'm gonna select the send button and when I do, you can see that the actual message sent successfully and we also get a preview of the message itself. We can pull out the data of this message and we can have a look at where the URL is and where it's been uploaded. We can literally test this out by copying the URL into the browser and making sure that it works, which it has. 
For our next example, we're going to upload a file, a media type file, using a URL rather than uploading it through traditional HTML. We're going to create a brand new function for this. We're going to call it send URL message, and we're going to update our old function here, just calling it send file message. This new message we can place into our onclick handler inside of our button so that we can call it next time. Now, it looks a little bit different than our previous example, so we're going to write this up from scratch so you can get a better idea of how it works. We'll start by defining our very first variable. This will be the receiver ID. This is going to just be Adrian once again, since I just want to send this to myself. The next thing that we need is a message type. This can be gained by passing in comment chat dot message underscore type dot image, since it's an image we'll be using. As always, we need to define the receiver type. So we'll pass in receiver type equals comment chat dot receiver underscore type dot user, since we're just passing it to a user this time. Let's define our media message. This is similar to what we did when we were uploading an image. So we'll just do let media message equals new comment chat dot media message. We're going to define the actual receiver ID. We're going to pass in blank for the actual file since we're going to define that next. And then finally, we'll pass in the message type as well as the receiver type. Now it's time to define a file. Let's create a new variable called file. It's going to be an object and it's going to have a few attributes. The very first one is name. Here, I'm just going to give it the name of comma chat. We also define the actual file extension. So I'm going to pass in JPG here. The next type is the meme type. Now this is going to be usually if it's an image, something like image forward slash JPG. So it gives context to the file type. Finally, we pass in the URL. You can see that this example is actually using PNG as a file type. So I'll actually update the file parameters for that. The final thing we need to do is attach this file to the media message. We need to create an attachment for that. Let's create a variable called let attachment equal new comma chat dot attachment and pass in the file. This now needs to be added into the media message. So we'll pass in media message dot set attachment and pass in this new attachment we've just created. Great. The media message is now ready to be used. We can literally use the same send media message format that we created earlier on as part of this message. So let's copy paste that in above and give it a test. I'm going to open up Chrome again and refresh the page and let's see how this works. Beautiful. We've sent our message and we can expand out the data. The data has a number of attachments and on the very first one, we've got our PNG as well as the URL that it's from. Let's view these to make sure it's working. And yes, yes, it is. Okay. Now it's time to take a look at our final message type, which is a custom message. I'm going to copy over this send URL message function and we're going to customize it. Let's get rid of all the media content, such as even the media message type, and we'll start fresh with a custom message. I'm going to update the function to be called send custom message, and I'm going to use this on my onclick handler in the button. I'm also going to go through all the common aspects of a media message and update those to be a custom message. So here I'll define a let custom message to equal a new comma chat custom message. And we'll also send a custom message with the variable custom message applied to the final function. Now that we have that set, we just need some custom data. I'll create a new variable here called custom data with a latitude as well as a longitude. This is a location. So we also need to define a custom data type. We create that using the custom type with a string attached. This string is nice and simple, and I'm just going to call it location for the time being. This is pretty much everything we need. We just need to update the new comma chat custom message prompt here because the actual arrangement of these are a little bit different. We start off with the receiver ID, then we move on to the receiver type. Then we need to pass in the custom type. And then finally, the custom data comes last. OK, let's test this out. I'm going to open up Chrome here and we're just going to do a quick refresh and click the send button. Here we can see that the data has successfully sent. We're sending a custom type of location and the data here is located in custom data. And we can extract that and see that latitude and longitude is there, which is absolutely great. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at how to properly receive messages. And this will be found just up here. 
awesome.